Well, welcome again to another edition of Shelter Daily and His Word. It's great to have you with us today, uh, whether you are watching us or you are listening to us. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for giving us this 30 minutes of time. I know how precious time is, and I'm thankful that you allow us to take this moment just to share with you today. Uh, we're looking at Psalms 77, and if you were with me yesterday, you know that uh, we're talking about a topic that a lot of people don't like to talk about, but we're, uh, we're challenging ourselves uh, to talk about this topic of depression because I know how important it is, especially in uh, the present situations that we're dealing with right now. So I'm, I'm thankful that the Word of God speaks to it. I'm thankful that we have the opportunity to be able to talk about it. And I know that it, for some it's uncomfortable. Some like to just push it away and not talk about it at all. But I do believe it's important for us to spend some time uh, dealing with it. You know, and a lot of people say, well, you know, you're a pastor. You know, what do you know about depression? What do you know about those things? Well, I can tell you that I know enough about it to know when I feel it. I know enough about it that I know when it's when I'm dealing with it in my own life, when I'm actually coming to that point of 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 feeling that darkness uh, in my heart if I'm not careful. And I praise God that, you know, in all of the things that go on, I am so, I rejoice in the Lord because I know that there's freedom from those things. And I know that there is hope beyond those things. And I know that we have the opportunity to be able to move into a good direction, especially under the, uh, under the uh, leadership of, of the Holy Spirit as He works in our lives. So uh, this is an important uh, psalm to look at. It's an important one for us to read and to apply into our lives. It's important for us to dig out the things that are there so that we can improve our well-being. I think everybody that I've ever talked to uh, wants to improve themselves. They, they want to have healthier lifestyles. They want to be healthy emotionally. They want to be healthy physically. And they want to be healthy spiritually. And I know a lot of times people don't like to talk even about the spiritual aspects of things because, you know, they, in our world today, uh, basically people are all about physical and, and, and uh, the emotional. So they look at physical and emotional. So, uh, you know, if you think about the uh, weight loss industry, it's multi millions of dollars people are spending on weight loss uh, programs and the like because they want to be healthy. Uh, there's a lot of different things, and, there, and there's a lot of people that do that. January is the biggest month of the year for people to join gyms, and February is the biggest month of the year to watch how people don't go to the gym. So spending money for something they don't use uh, I would imagine some of you listening to me, watching me, probably had a treadmill or an elliptical in your home at one time and discovered it was only a good place to hang clothes. Uh, you very seldom ever used it. Uh, so you put it in, look at, I mean, look on, look at the uh, garage sales. You find hosts of, uh, you know, workout equipment, things like that, that people have bought and purchased and got rid of. Uh, you know, they're trying to, to recoup a little bit. They don't use it anymore, whatever. Uh, because there is this part of us that wants it and desires it. But then when it comes down to it, to really do the things that are necessary, a lot of times our mental state uh, stops us from acquiring and fixing the physical. And then when the physical's not working the way it should, then the mental begins to uh, uh, be affected by it. And I, and I know that even from my own life, I've, I've dealt with this. I've, I've gone through this in my own life. I remember going through a very, very dark time um, on, on an occasion where um, I, I was finding myself uh, overly uh, uh, overweight. And uh, the more uh, physical things I started having going wrong with me, the 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 worse my mental state was getting. 
and it was a fight back and forth, back and forth. And somewhere along the way, you, know, you, you have to get a handle on it. Because what happens is, is that you begin to get, people don't realize that a lot of what they're dealing with is really is signs of depression. So we talked about a couple of them yesterday. We talked about this overwhelming, uh, overwhelming feeling in our spirit where we just become overwhelmed. And, and the psalmist talked about this. He said, you know, when I remember God, he said, I just, I, I get upset when I remember God. I get upset. And, he, and, he, and it's like, it's not that he gets upset with God. It's, he gets upset when he thinks about things because it makes him fearful. And that state of fearfulness makes him begin to wonder about whether or not God does care about him or not. Now, we saw this, and we see it through his, his questions he asks in verses 7, 8, and 9. So he, he's going to go through that, and, and we're going to see this. And then, and then he also, if you look in verse 6, he said that in my night hours, he said, I remember when my nights used to be filled with song and joy, and, and I had all this peace, and then I look at where I am now and I search my soul and I wonder, why is it not like that now? What's different? What's changed? And I think that this is one of the things that, that, that we have to look at. And I know that the Holy Spirit has a way of opening our eyes to see things. But a lot of times what happens is the enemy, because you know when we, when we start thinking about our past, we start looking at our past through, as, I, as I've said, through jaded glasses, if you will. A lot of times we look at our past as if it was something really great. And it really wasn't as great as we think it was. But the enemy makes it look like that. I remember uh, a few years ago when I was, like I said, when I was going through these, these dark moments, I remember thinking, boy, if I could just go back and live where I used to live, at least there, you know, I, I you know, I had a good job and I was, you know, I didn't feel this way. And that was the furthest thing. That was not even true. Truth is, is that I dealt with things then just like I deal with, dealt with them at the moment I was thinking about it. It wasn't any different. It's just that the enemy likes to paint a picture of our past life as if it was something wonderful. And so what happens to a lot of people, especially as Christians, who don't know how to deal with or not sure what to, because we always think that, well, when I pray, it should just go away. When I pray, it just should disappear. And we don't realize that, that yeah, prayer is important, but at the same time, we're questioning why we're feeling the way we are and why we don't get answers right when we think we ought to get answers. And what's going on with us? What's wrong with us? And we almost, and we get depressed because we feel like, man, you know, I'm not supposed to feel this way. I'm not supposed to act this way. This is not real. And we start looking back. We think, man, I wish we could have it like this. And all. we start reflecting on days gone by and how great things were. And oh, it was so wonderful then. And then this, that, and the other. The truth of the matter, there, that it was no different then than it is right now. It's just that we're not thinking about the negative stuff we had back then because we're too focused on the negative things we're dealing with right now. And that is, that, that's where the issue rises. Because we jade the way we think about our past. We jade the way we think about what things used to be. We don't really think about them in the same light as we're looking at our present moment, our present situation. Because our present situation, we're feeling things. We're, it's, it's real to us right now. But our past is our past. We, you, know, you can think of a song that's played. As soon as that song is played, it takes you to a happy moment. That's what the psalmist was saying. In, in the night hours, I think about my past, and I think about, man, we used to sing these great songs. I've had people say that even at church. It's like, Pastor, when am I going to sing that song again? I think, well, why do you want us to sing that song? Oh, that song moves me. Okay. Why does it move you now? Well, chances are it's because it brings back and it elicits some emotional feeling you had before. It brings up something, and usually it's positive. We don't like to talk about our past in the negative. We don't usually look at our past in a negative way. And this is what the, 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 the psalmist was, was talking about. He says, you know, in my night hours, 
I remember when I used to be filled with these songs and I could think about all this. And that was a great moment. But now he says, I search my soul and I ponder and I wonder, what's the difference now? Well, the difference is, is that I'm in a situation right now where I'm feeling something. It is affecting me. It is, it is touching my emotion. It is touching me physically. It's touching my mind. It's touching me. It's affecting things around me. And that's the difference. It really is there. And not only does it do that, notice if you look at verse 4, uh, just above verse 6, he said this in verse 4. He said, you don't let me sleep. I'm too distressed even to pray. So what's happening is, is that now that he's in the state, whatever state it is, whatever's causing this, it's robbing him of his sleep. So when you don't rest well, what happens to your, your physical body? You become physically drained. You have no energy because you don't rest. Depression will rob you of your sleep. And some people say, well, man, if I get to all I want. See, for me, all I want to do is sleep. I don't even want to get out. When I've dealt with this, this part of my life, I, would, I, wouldn't even want, I don't want to even inter- engage with people. And the truth is, is when your sleep is robbed of you, you don't want to engage with people either. The, the last thing you want to do is to sit down and have a conversation with someone like me to talk to me about what's really going on in your life. Because one, you don't feel emotionally up to it. Two, you don't physically feel like you can sit there and listen and, and engage with me. And three, you, you are so out of it emotionally at that moment because you are, you are at a place to where you're not even thinking rationally because you've been lacking sleep. And when you lack sleep, your mind doesn't rest. And when your mind doesn't rest, you, have, you, have the, you become unable to be able to actually rationalize things. And especially if you go long term. And this is one of the problems you run into with insomnia. A lot of people deal with insomnia. And a lot of it, they don't realize that their insomnia is, is really dealing with something, it's, it's, because it's causing something emotional that's causing the insomnia. It's something emotional that's happening with them. Something's going on and they're not really wanting to deal with it, not really confront it, and they don't want to talk to somebody about it. So what they do is, instead of going to someone uh, like a pastor or, or even a Christian counselor, someone like that, they'll go to their medical doctor and their medical doctor will prescribe them a script for anxiety or a sleeping pill to help them sleep. And the reality, they're, all they're doing is treating a symptom. They're not treating the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is the reason why I'm lacking sleep, the reason why is because I'm thinking too much about my past. It's keeping me awake. And the reason I'm thinking about my past is because I'm looking at my present situation. My spirit man is so low that I, I'm looking for a way to find somewhere where I can have my, what we call our happy place. And you've probably heard people say that. I just need to go to my happy place. Where's my happy place? And this is, a, this is something that goes on. What's really happening? Well, the truth is, is that there is depression on some level. Now, I'm not saying it could be full-blown. Now, if it gets to this point to where you're no longer sleeping at night and you're so distressed that you won't even pray, you, you stay away from the, the house of God, you close yourself off from people, then, then you can see depression does that. See, depression will cut you out. You'll cut out people. The people that care about you, you'll close them off. The people that you love, uh, even the, the ones that you love the most, and what will happen is you replace that with worry and anxiety and, and anxiousness, and that anxiousness then turns into distress, and that distress robs you of sleep. And you know, the truth is, when is depression the worst? During the daytime hours? Oh, no. Oh, no. Depression, the, when you're emotionally uh, on a down, the daytime is not as bad. It's the night hours. It's the long nights. And when you are in those long nights and you're not sleeping and you're not resting, when you're, all you're doing is thinking about and going back in your memory banks trying to think of all those good things you had 
and why, you know, and you're measuring all those things in the past to the present situation that you're in. And basically what you've done is you're saying, oh, it was so much better then than it is now. And, and, we, and we're forgetting, we're forgetting about the good things that are here and we're not thinking about the bad things that were there. So we're basically leaving out two parts of a four-part equation. We're leaving out, all, you know, the past had good and bad, and the present has good and bad and bad and good. It just, it's, that's the way it is. So when, you, when you're in that, and this is what happens, so you go, and, and the, more you, the more you do that, the more you do that, all right, your eyelids refuse to close, you become fearful. It's like you, 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 allow, you, you don't want to go to sleep because then what happens is, is your mind begins to think about in the present situation things like, oh, I feel like I'm going to die. I feel like that I'm out of it. I feel like I'm not going to make it. I feel like I'm too overwhelmed. Uh, there's nothing good's coming out of this. I don't feel good. And I'm, and I'm looking back and thinking, oh, man, when it was there, I was so wonderful. I, just, I would rather die right now than to feel what I'm feeling right now because I had it so much better before. And all that is is deception. It's really not true. But in that moment of depression, it's as true to you as it is anything else. <laughs> and a lot of times people don't realize that. But what's really happening is depression. And instead of us looking for ways to find help for it, we would rather go talk to our doctor and our doctor, our medical doctor, which medical doctors are trained for certain things. I'm not saying that they can't help us. But what I'm saying is, is that sometimes medical doctors, it's out of their field of expertise. And sometimes what needs to happen is if you could go sit down and talk to someone who who's, deals with that aspect of it, the emotional part. It's not just physical. The doctor can treat your physical ailments, but he cannot treat your mental ailments. That's not his play, unless he's a doctor that deals with those kinds of things. And, and, I, you know, and I'm, not, I'm not opposed to those things. A lot of people are, you know, they think, oh, if I have to go see a psychologist uh, or a psychiatrist or something like that, that, oh, that's just the worst of the worst. That's the worst thing that ever happened. I'm not a Christian if I do that. You can go to a Christian psychologist. You can go to a, 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 you can go to a psych, psychiatrist who, who, who's, whose foundation they work from is the word of God and they use the word of God and, and medications and things like that are not their go-to. You know, and it's not to say that, you know, sometimes, you know, we get out of balance, you know, with our, our chemicals are out of balance, but what happens if we're not careful, you can see the wrong, it's like, I'm not going to take my car, all right, to a baker to have him work on my car. A baker bakes cakes and food. Now, he may say he knows something about cars, but I'm not going to, you know, I wouldn't do that. I'm going to take my car to someone who knows how to work on cars. Why am I going to go to someone who doesn't deal with emotional things? They only deal with the physical things. Same thing. You're not going to have, you know, if, if the doc, if you need brain surgery, you're not going to go to a urologist for brain surgery. You wouldn't do that. You're going to go to someone who is specializing in those areas. But a lot of times we won't bother that because we just think, oh no, it's not the way it is. And we don't realize what's happening. The anxiety, the depression, the things like that. And it robs us. He even says it robs him of sleep. It rob not only that, but, and, 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 and that's the thing. This, this, these night hours is where it gets us. He even goes on to say is, in, in verse 4, he says, I'm so troubled that I don't even want to talk about it. Have you ever been there? I don't want to talk about it. Uh, you know, there's two causes of dumbness. And when I use the word dumbness, and you can look this up, okay? Dumbness means an unwilling, uh, unwilling to speak. When, I, when I'm unwilling to speak. When, when, I, when I come to the place to where, you know, and you probably heard people, and I'm not making light of this, but, you know, sometimes, you know, we do things and it's just, it's just, we're being dumb. We're not speaking. We're not talking about it. And there's two reasons for that. One, preoccupation. Two, depression. 
We're, we're so preoccupied that we're not, we're not talking. Have you ever, have you ever, my wife, I, I've done this, you know, and I don't know my wife uh, tells me this at times. She'll, she'll say something and I'll be completely preoccupied with something else and miss everything she said, never hear a word she said. And it's not that I, I, I lack hearing. I can hear. But my hearing at that moment in time and my ability to speak was shut off because I was preoccupied doing something else. So I don't hear it. It's not that I'm deaf, not that I'm dumb, not that I'm unable to speak. It's just that I turn, I'm preoccupied. And the other side of that is, is that I don't want to talk about it simply because I'm too depressed to talk about it. I don't want to, and we can easily shake ourselves out of our preoccupation, but we cannot so easily shake ourselves out of our depression or at those moments of darkness. If we're not careful, now there's things that, you know, and, and, and we, can, we can talk about this, and I, and I will, I'd like to, you know, you say, well, if these are, these are things that happen, um, when, you know, these are some of the effects, these are effects of, of depression, these are things that affect me. I, my spirit becomes low, my memory becomes awakened, I start looking at the past more than the present, or even to the future. Uh, it robs me of my sleep, I become very distressed, I no longer want to pray, I don't want to be in the house of God, I don't want to be around people, I don't want to talk about things, I keep my mouth, when people ask me, how are you doing? We give them the pet answer, I'm doing fine. Okay, doing well. No problems. No. There's a lot more going on there. We've got to be careful. All right? And not only that, we've got to be careful because sometimes we can assume things that are not. I could be really preoccupied, I just didn't hear what you're saying. Or I could be, I could be depressed. So he said, well, what are, what are some of those more common causes of depression? What causes people, you know, to, to get into these depressive states? Well, if you look at verse 2, um, you notice that the psalmist says uh, that he refused to be comforted. He refuses to be comforted. In, in the day of trouble, I sought the Lord, and, and, and my sore ran into the night, and I ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. So there's this, this idea of a morbid, uh, pessimistic outlook of life, a very negative outlook. Some people are, 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 are just full of pessimism. Um, they, if you say that the cup is half full, they'll say it's half empty. Uh, they, if you say things are going well, they'll, they'll talk about how things are not going well. Uh, you, always thinking that and speaking in a minor key, if you will. Um, it's really interesting because um, the song Amazing Grace, Amazing Grace is written on all the dark keys. And you can play the entire song on all the black keys. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. was blind, but now I see. And that song actually, by Newton wrote the song, John Newton wrote the song, and he wrote it from a tune that he heard the slaves that they would they would sound this this tune this particular as they were in the bottoms of the slave ships that he was a, of a captain of he was a slave uh, he ran the slave ships and he would hear that tune over and over and over again and the day that he got saved and his life was turned around um, he wrote this song amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me i once was lost but now i'm found was blind but now i see but the song if you listen to the tune of the song the tune of that song is really not like a uh, you you don't in fact it's a sad it, it's almost sad it has a great message but it almost has a, a, a sad tone to it. Uh, that's the reason why, if you ever hear it, when bagpipes play this song, it has a real, uh, it's beautiful, but man, it's got this real kind of a, a, a down kind of t tone to it. And some people, they only live their lives speaking in the negative. They never really enjoy good health they really just enjoy bad health. 
They never have nothing good to say. They refuse. I mean, if it's sunny outside, they'll say, yeah, but it's going to rain this afternoon. If it's warm, yeah, but there's a cold front coming in. They always have a way. Uh, someone called them, the, they call it Debbie Downer. And, and, and it's, it, that's their life. It says they, they're always looking for the negative. They're, they're pessimistic about everything. As Christ followers and as believers, the truth is, is that we ought to be people that you know, cultivate uh, what I would term holy optimism, if you will. A, a, a deliberate look at the positive. So you know what? Yeah, it's sunny outside and we're praying for sunshine every day. I know that sun can't shine every day. Uh, I want it to shine every day. Uh, but we have, ought to have this optimism and, and we ought to deliberately refuse to dwell upon the dark side of things, the demonic side of things, the negative side of things. Uh, you know, when you think about it, as a believer, ask yourself this question. What right do I really have to be a pessimist? Why should I not be an optimist? I mean, think about Hebrews 13, 6. It says this, we, have, uh, we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I will not fear. What can men, what can people do to me? If the Lord is my helper, I don't have to worry, I don't have to fear, I don't have to fret, because the Lord will, is there. He's my helper. I don't even have to worry about what people can do to me because of God. John 14, I love what Jesus said to his disciples prior to his uh, going to the cross. He said, you know, don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. The things I've said, the things I'm telling you. So even though I know that there are, you know, there is this idea out there that if we're not careful, that it would be real easy to get to become very pessimistic in life, we've got to learn that, that there's another way to look at things. And it's hard for us sometimes to push through that. This is why it becomes very important for us to listen to what others are saying and to help, let them help us move through this and, and be able to come to the other side. Why? Because a lot of times, a lot of times, we can become very pessimistic, we can be very dark about the way we live, the way we think about things. And that can be very negative for us. And that's not where God wants us to be. And that's why he said, don't, you, know, you don't have to be troubled. If you can trust in God. And that's one of the things, you know, I remember some years ago, a very, very dear friend of this church, in fact, he was my clerk for many years, ever since I've been a pastor, he was my clerk. And I remember him going through a very depressed state. And I remember when he came out of it, and thank God he came out of it. And uh, with the help of, you know, the saints praying for him. And he had a, a good, you know, doctor that was able to help treat the issue that he was dealing with. And it wasn't a medical doctor either. But the one thing I remember him saying above everything else, I remember him sitting there saying to me, he said, Pastor, he said, if it had not been for my knowledge of the Word of God. Now, one thing I will say about my, my brother Alvin, I loved him so dearly. He read the Bible every single day. Every day of his life that, I, that I've known, every day that I knew him, he read the Word. I would, I would find him, when he would come to his office, he would have his Word. He would be reading the word. Even when he got to the point where he was literally going blind, he would have a magnifying glass and he would take that magnifying glass and he would put it over the word and he would read the word. And he told me this. He said, if I didn't, if I hadn't had the word in my heart, he said, I believe without doubt I would have died. That my depression would have killed me. He had no doubt about it. But it was the Word. He said it was the Word of God that kept his mind because every time he was thinking all the negative things he was thinking and going through all the negative things he was going through, he would always pull back to the Word of God and the Word of God would bring it. I'm telling you, 
This is what the this is what Jesus was saying. Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. Trust in my word. Father, I know that there are those right now watching me. I know that they're listening. And Father, the one thing I want to see happen for them is that they'll trust you. And Father, I just ask you today, Lord, if they're in that situation, if they recognize God, that they're living their lives in a very negative state, God, they're, they're constantly looking back to the... I pray, God, first of all, one, they would not forget your word. And two, Lord, let them recognize and realize that it's okay to talk to someone who can help them. Someone who can give them a, a, a biblical foundation and a word from you that can enable them God, to come from where they are to where they need to be. And thank you, God, for this word, because it does speak to us. And God, it does help us. And Lord, your word is, is a foundation on which we can build our lives. So bless them today, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining with me today for this edition of Shelter Daily. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. May the Lord bless you, and we'll pick this back up again, and we're going to be moving into looking at uh, what we can do in order for us to be able to move beyond these places in our lives. God bless you. Have a great day. Music.